We are the anchors of Queer News Tonight, and this evening we discuss the queer headlines. The new Stonewall Pride issue of Hotspots Magazine is on stands Thursday. Tonight, you're going to hear all the fun things happening in South Florida. The Out for Biden-Harris initiative, led by First Lady Dr. Jill Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, is winning LGBTQ plus hearts this Pride Month. The longest rainbow in the world has been installed in Toronto by queer artist Travis Myers. It is nearly 2,000 feet long and has historical significance too. It brings new meaning to Over the Rainbow. LGBTQ plus protests at a Custer Bridge and pride colorful flashlights to mock the Santa's Freedom Summer anti-LGBTQ plus initiative. Good evening and welcome to Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only LGBTQ plus daily evening television news, broadcasting live and available on demand. We're available on all smart televisions, including Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, YouTube, and Facebook. It's time to queer up the news. It's Tuesday, June 4th, 2024, and we are live and literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we're going to tell this evening on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ plus evening news show. Whatever happens, unique in LGBTQ plus news, you will see it and hear it. Hotspots Magazine Happening Out Television Network is a nonprofit 501c3 media company in the same model of PBS and NPR, but designed for the LGBTQ plus community. Our mission is to support the 11 pillars of our LGBTQ plus community. We want to inform and educate the key issues of our queer culture, the black community, Latino, lesbians and queer women, trans, students, youth, seniors, HIV, AIDS, healthcare, business, social justice, and faith. Help us support our community. We are part of one of the largest LGBTQ plus nonprofit media companies in America, Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network. In 2024, our magazine is celebrating 40 years of the LGBTQ plus experience and our television news and talk entertainment shows support our mission to educate the LGBTQ plus and broader community. Now let's meet tonight's anchors of Queer News Tonight. Let's welcome Oscar A. Nova. He works at Stonewall Pageantry System and is the current Mr. Stonewall 2024. He's also the producer of the Trailblazer Awards ceremony on June 9th at Hot Spots Happening Out Art Gallery with Dennis Dean. Welcome Oscar, happy to have you here. Thank you for having me here. Welcome, welcome to the Thank table. You to be here. Uh, now let's welcome my friend, Greg Shapiro, an inductee into the Chicago LGBT Hall of Fame. Greg is the author of two short story collections and seven books of poetry. He's an entertainment journalist whose celebrity interviews and reviews run in a variety of print and online publications. And I believe he's a Gemini and it was his birthday. Mm. So happy birthday, Greg, and welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, we are both happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, let's welcome anchor Dino Mascara. Dino joined the Miami Gay and Lesbian Film Festival in the late 90s and now serves on the Outshine Festival's Board of Directors. Welcome, Dino. Thank you. Happy Pride Month. Oh, happy Pride. And let's welcome William Haas. He serves as the president of the Bears of South Florida. They are the winner of Out SFL's Best Social Group in South Florida. Will is a seasoned bi-coastal real estate professional and experienced in the Fort Lauderdale, Wilton Manors, and Naples and Marco Island locations. William, Bears of South Florida is holding a Bono Restaurant Give Back Monday fundraiser at Bono Italian Restaurant in Wilton Manors on June 17th. Tell us what's happening. First of all, rawr, fellow bears, <laughs> how are y'all? Um, our Bona Dine Out is going to be on the 17th, and it's going to be an amazing meal at Bona Dine Out. Make your reservations. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit, and all the money we raise, we give out to other LGBT nonprofits in the area. So either dine in, take out, order your food, but help support the bears. Get those garlic rolls. Garlic oh, yeah. <laughs> They're delicious, by the way. <laughs> and of course, tonight's lead anchor, is Jeff Oliverio. He is a financial advisor and certified financial planner 
with the Truest Wealth in Fort Lauderdale. Jeff is one of the founders of and president of the Hollywood LGBTQ Plus Council. He has served as co-chair for the National LGBTQ Task Force Gala since 2021. Welcome, Jeff. Uh, happy to be here. Happy Pride, everyone. We are the reporters for Queer News Tonight, and this evening we begin with the queer headlines. The LGBTQ Plus community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast, and here are the bullet points for the queer news for Tuesday, June 4th, 2024. First this evening, let's queer up South Florida and Florida. Get the best gifts for Father's Day in this week's Hot Spots magazine. Sunday, June 16th is Father's Day. It doesn't matter if you're looking for something for your biological father or just your daddy, Hot Spots magazine has you covered. This year's issue has over 50 items for the leading man in your life, from skincare to scotch. The new issue also features information on Floatorama on June 8th and the upcoming community dance at the Arch Center for the Performing Arts. This event takes place on June 9th and will be hosted by our own Faye... What? Is that how you say that? Um, you can also find more information on the hit show Clue at the Broward Center, as well as some of the hottest new pride gear for the ladies. Check out this sneak peek of the cover and get your copy of Hot Spots magazine on stands Thursday. Um, first of all, uh, I love this cover. First of all, um, <laughs> I'll be the first. I'll, I'll be the first. I'll be the first to comment on that. Um, there are so many events going on this month. Um, I don't know about everyone here at the table. Um, I'm having a hard time keeping mm -hmm. track of them and keeping up. So them, get your copy of Hot Spots and um, and start putting those dates in your calendar. Community. I want to go there for the. It's a, it's a I've never great, been. It's a great Alex, event. Alex yeah. Newell, right? Yeah, Alex Newell will be there, right? Yeah. It's a great event. They do it outside in the plaza at the Arch Center. It's really a fun event. And what do you have planned for Father's Day? Um, I actually will have nothing planned as of yet but i will be with my son yeah that's right you have a oh, son that's right. Right. That's yeah. Right. yeah that's right happy father's day to you thank you, happy father's day. Thank you. <laughs> well i'm a daddy so i'll be daddy. passing out the hot spot magazine <laughs> even over the house for, we'll for actually will be the same thing as <laughs> get a, get a why not <laughs> it's not too late to get a daddy <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i want a daddy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> <laughs> next let's queer up politics biden harris campaign launches Pride Month initiative to mobilize LGBTQ plus voters. The Biden-Harris 2024 campaign has announced a robust organizing initiative and media blitz in honor of Pride Month, targeting LGBTQ plus voters in communities across important battleground states ahead of the November election. Spearheaded by First Lady Dr. Jill Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, the campaign aims to galvanize support within the LGBTQ plus electorate. Dr. Biden made a significant statement this week at Pittsburgh's annual Pride Festival, where she passionately criticized former President Donald Trump's policies, deeming them dangerous for the LGBTQ plus community. She underscored the pivotal role of LGBTQ plus voters and celebrated the strides made by the community. Meanwhile, Vice President Harris engaged with local LGBTQ plus leaders in Los Angeles, reinforcing the campaign's commitment to inclusivity and equality. The campaign's Out for Biden Harris initiative, launched in April, aims to rally LGBTQ plus support for President Biden and Vice President Harris's reelection bid. This initiative will collaborate with LGBTQ plus clubs, caucuses, and grassroots networks across 23 states, participating in over 200 Pride events, including parades in Milwaukee, Detroit, Pittsburgh, and St. Petersburg. Highlighting the critical juncture for LGBTQ plus rights in the 2024 election, the campaign has received endorsements from numerous LGBTQ plus organizations, including a significant investment from the Human Rights Campaign. With more than 8% of the U.S. population identifying as LGBTQ+, and a growing awareness of LGBTQ plus rights as a decisive issue, the Biden-Harris campaign is determined to champion equality and justice for all Americans. Well, let me just say, what a delight and life-affirming difference it makes to have Dr. Jill Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris on our side Instead of Felonia, I mean Melania, and Mary, I mean Mike. <laughs>
pence. <laughs> now, if we can only make certain that all registered, important registered LGBTQ plus voters, as well as our friends and our family, make it to the polls to return President Biden to the Oval Office for another four years. Let's, let's reach out to people and make sure that happens. Uh, I think the, the, the biggest initiative that we as LGBTQ voters have to realize is that it's intersectionality of our issues. And um, I'm happy to see that the Biden-Harris campaign, of course, is reaching out to our community through Pride events and through these initiatives. Um, but the issues that are facing voters this year, um, you know, reproductive rights affect women. Um, you know, gun control affects, you know, all of our safety. Um, inflation and access to affordable health care is an issue that affects all Americans. So the issues of LGBTQ LGBTQ people are the same issues of everyone, mm -hmm. and we have to make outreach to again our friends and family who are who are supporters of us to give them a reason uh, to go out and vote and say why it's important to us. Because it's not just about supporting LGBTQ people; that's why we should elect Biden Harris. But it's about making sure that we you know support the mm -hmm. issues that are across the, across our our, our yeah. community. Yeah. And I I think that this is the time when we need to remember that they're not just doing this because it's, it's Gay Pride Month. You know, they have been supporting us all along since the beginning of his mm -hmm. term. So we cannot forget that and start, you know, getting complacent and just starting to, you know, make excuses. Oh, it's because he's not, you know, vital or he's too old or no. I mean, we mm -hmm. cannot start using these lame excuses that are being mm -hmm. sold by the Republican exactly. Party right. for us to just stay home and not go out and vote. They have been supporting us all along. It's not just mm -hmm. now because we're heading to an, an election this year. This is being continuous. So this is our time to show our support. And not only for them, it's also for local politics. Rick Scott right. is coming up for re-election mm -hmm. this, this year. Mm -hmm. So and then shortly after will be Ron DeSantis, mm -hmm. which we need to get well, out of our organization. He's done. <laughs> not only as you say, it's just also affect our generation. Correct. And, and everybody that right. we don't only have to reach out to our friends and family. We also have to reach out to the people that we have the opportunity to speak to on a daily basis mm -hmm. to in order for them to have actually one conscious as we all have here sitting down today mm -hmm. cool. and uh, take advantage of the platforms or all the all the tools that they have to make people known exactly what is it what is going to happen no now no not the, as you say that is actually uh, um uh, pray, pride month is also what is going to happen in the future for our beloved ones that are going to be here and living right. with us and, and you know and it's, it's going to hit us it's going to hit us home mm -hmm. one, at one point and that's what is matter. Uh, uh, yeah, he's gonna reach. Well, in terms reach. Of, yeah. Oh, I'm preach. Uh, oh, yeah. reach. In terms yeah, yeah. of Sanders, he's done. He's had his two terms. So he's frightening for whatever thing he's on to next. Um, and also in terms of the age thing with, with Biden, let's not forget that Trump aged a good 20 years during this trial. So mm -hmm. now he's, he looks and acts a lot older. Uh, look, for example, Maria Elvira Salazar is coming up for re-election this year. Mm -hmm. right. This is something that affects us very much yeah. in Miami-Dade County. Yeah, She's yes, in my district. Absolutely. So she is one that is an opportunist that has been made a career, and now she's completely out of her mind supporting Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So this is when we need to work. get, you know, put our money where our mm -hmm. mouth is mm -hmm. because this cannot continue. Mm -hmm. And she's one, one case that we need to. I did have one question for Oscar. What, as, as the youngest person here at the table tonight. <laughs> uh, How I've, dare I've, you? I've heard. Um, <laughs> you heard it. Well, um, what do you think is the biggest issues to get young people to vote? And what are you hearing from your friends and your networks? The biggest issues that I'm, that I actually being, act as you say, being with my friends out there and being encountering nowadays is the one that that campaigns are not dedicated to us. Mm -hmm. We don't have a particular space. And by that, our boys are being shut down. Mm -hmm. Then what I mean by that is the following thing. Not necessarily has to go our way in the way that we find entertainment, but it also have to be the way that we shop, the way that we actually behave, that places that we visit mm -hmm. is not visible to us. You can go to a movie theater and you don't see nobody making campaign for the right thing that we think that is the right direction that we mm -hmm. should go to and the way that we call, they would call us our attention mm -hmm. and we feel gravitating towards doing the right thing or choosing at the right 
a, a candidate for for our voices to be heard. It's getting in the spaces exactly. where, where you're engaging. It's, exactly. Because, um, it's, a lot of these campaign events, they're not accessible. Exactly. And, um, so for us, targeted in the right way. Exactly. For us, it's very more. It's very 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 difficult at times. As a person I, like me, I don't watch TV. First, first of all, I watch Netflix. But then when I'm watching Netflix and I don't find no commercials between mm -hmm. them, which that's what I pay for at the end of the day, but there yet is not an introduction program, uh, introduction like uh, 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 item that will tell me something about voting. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. that has been explained that it's, most so, it's not about the introduction, it's not about that. It's just what will make my life right mm -hmm. now, what affect my life right now, and how can they get? And to how vote? can I get to vote? And what, 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 how, why I want to pay attention to that in the first place? Well, other than queer news tonight, where are you finding your news? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's... I find my news here. I find you guys in Trudeau. Well, the Biden campaign has been doing, has been engaging even yeah. in TikTok and, mm -hmm. and embracing Correct. platforms that at least. Um, are aimed at getting those voters, mm -hmm. but I also think it's the surrogates in the campaign that, exactly. are, that have to go out yeah, there true. and engage because exactly. listen, yeah, Biden right. doesn't have a lot in common with people that are under the age Correct. of 30. Correct. Exactly. I mean, exactly. It's just, uh, yeah, just, just the reality. That's why we need Taylor Swift. Yeah. We need right. Taylor yeah. Swift. Yeah. Exactly. We need, we we need like, like, we need people like that, like people who yeah. will be even more involved with that because that if you hear Spotify, for example, community. you pay for YouTube Premium, mm -hmm. you pay for Spotify, you pay for i uh, for i uh, music. You're kept away. From yeah. Exactly. So I'm actually held mm. from being what is going on in the reality oh, because I found horrible or I found so much drama in normal television. That that's why I problem. keep away myself from it. And that's why I'd rather pay for that for those for those um, point, things right. to happen. Oh, good insight. That's, that's right. why it's so important for everybody to register to vote. Yes. Educate yourself on the correct. Yes. Take your time. Correct. Do that. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. So next. Let's square up the worldview. Toronto unveils world's longest rainbow, a symbol of LGBTQ plus pride and progress. Toronto has proudly introduced what is now considered the longest rainbow in the world, stretching nearly 2,000 feet or 600 meters. Aptly named the Long Walk to Equality, this monumental rainbow is an art installation crafted by acclaimed queer artist, Travis Myers. Its grand Unveiling saw the presence of prominent figures from the LGBTQ plus community, including Canada's drag race star Jada Shada Hudson, um, supported by a coalition of sponsors, including Skittles, Gilead Health, the Waterfront BIA, Billy Bishop Airport, and Freddie Pharmacy. The Rainbow Graces Handlands Point, a location steeped in historical significance. It was here that the inaugural Toronto Pride event took place, making it Canada's oldest surviving queer space. Notably, the road housing the rainbow is designated solely for pedestrians and cyclists, a deliberate choice to foster inclusivity and safety. Queer artist Travis Myers expressed his intention behind the installation, stating it serves as a beacon of belonging and empowerment. He hopes that every step taken along the rainbow-filled path instills a sense of deservingness and authenticity in individuals. Furthermore, the installation serves as a tribute to the pioneers of LGBTQ plus rights, honoring their legacy and paving the way for future generations. Myers envisions the road as, symbol as a symbolic bridge connecting the past, present, and future of the queer community echoing the strides made in Toronto's ongoing journey towards equality and acceptance. Toronto is, as we know, not only the largest city in Canada, but actually one of the cities that hosts the most, the largest gay pride parade in the world. Uh, I've been there a couple of times. I was there for World Pride, and it's amazing the support of all the city. I know Canada is a very progressive country, very liberal, and and very uh, yeah, yeah leftist, if you if you may. But there is also a right wing mm -hmm. uh, going on wave going on in Canada. So their rights are not all guaranteed, and things are changing in little provinces and townships around Canada. So things like this are important mm -hmm. to show the world that to Torontonians and to the biggest, you know, the, the powerhouse of Canada, which is Ontario and Toronto, 
that this matters, that gay pride and the rights of LGBT people in Canada mm -hmm. are taken into consideration and they're important to the society because things are changing. And, you know, the, the Trump effect is, oh. is, is blowing north too. Right. So, so it is important that things like this continue to happen and, and they're going to be celebrating Right again at the end of June. So this is fantastic. I mean, I'm not surprised. Canada always has shown the way when it comes to this to gay gay marriage and recognition mm -hmm. of gay marriage. Yeah. So like they did in the beginning, many many years before us. Mm -hmm. So so this is fantastic. I'm so proud of our mm -hmm. Canadian sisters and brothers to the north. Well, anyone who's been to Toronto's <laughs> gay village knows mm. <laughs> that it is a city that loves and celebrates its right. LGBTQ plus citizens and how can you not love the fact that skittles is one of the <laughs> yeah. uh, takes that rainbow <laughs> but i have something to say and share with you greg it's just that i actually was an addict to skittles when i was in high school <laughs> <laughs> and i've been tasting that rainbow and we enjoyed uh, that rainbow from my what happened to you yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i've been skittles, loving it you so get that red dye <laughs> no one is starting no but it actually is being my addiction too that's why probably i feel so <laughs> identified with the rainbow at this point in time <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important, though, as you mentioned, you know, we actually covered a story here at Queer News uh, last week about, again, they're stripping rights from in some of the provinces yeah. for um, health care access for trans people mm -hmm. and for and for youth. So, um, again, they have their red state, blue state issues just like we do here. Mm -hmm. And so it is really important that we continue to see these statements made to help support our community and to create visibility, especially when there are attacks still coming in their country as there are here mm -hmm. but it's nice this artwork creates a safe space for everybody i mean who want, does want to walk on a rainbow you know yeah I'm we don't feel happy in a rainbow yes. yeah but who knew who knew they were such size queen uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. well they went really big though actually it's very very impressive uh, nick great. let's square up politics protesters light up acousta bridge with rainbow color amidst controversy over pride month in florida the LGBTQ plus community addresses attacks in unique ways. This time, it's with flashlights. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis faced criticism for his approach to Pride Month for choosing to light up major Florida bridges in red, white, and blue as part of the Freedom of Summer initiative. This decision meant no special lighting to commensurate events like Pride Month or Juneteenth, which traditionally see bridges adorned with rainbow colors in solidarity with the LGBTQ plus community. Amongst the affected bridges was the iconic Sunshine Skyway over Tampa Bay and the Ringling Bridge in Sarasota, typically illuminated with rainbow lights for a few days during Pride Month. Outraged by lack of recognition, many LGBTQ plus individuals and allies in the state voiced their discontent. In a response, a group known as Pride in Our Freedom organized a, peace, a peaceful protest on the Acosta Bridge in Jacksonville. Approximately 70 protesters gathered, walking onto the bridge with flashlights and temporarily transforming the vibrant rainbow hues, while the bridge's central lights remained red, white, and blue. The addition of rainbow colors was a potent gesture of defiance against the administration's decision, despite the protests and the widespread outcry. Governor DeSantis refrained from issuing any messages acknowledging Pride Month in his social media channels. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris openly embraced the LGBTQ plus community, speaking heated reactions from some conservative circles. Well, you know, I think that that was an amazing gesture that people did, you know, and, it, and I think that if we give Ron DeSantis, you know, if we say something to him, it's just going to ignite his fire more and more. It's like having that crazy uncle that comes to, you know, your holiday party and they kind of ruin it for you. So if you just kind of avoid him and put him in the corner and we just go, you know, have fun and celebrate. And I think that what these people did, the 70 people, that's amazing. He is the drunk uncle. I never thought right. about that. He is. <laughs> right. You know, defiance and resistance are two of my favorite words ending in A-N-C-E. <laughs> and we must never, ever stop defying and resisting governor death sentence and his hateful <laughs> actions. Yeah. What I personally encounter in my life with people like this, like the un like a drunk uncle, as <laughs> mentioning here, is just the person will never change their mentality unless they wanted to change it. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we can do is do ourselves the best job possible mm -hmm. in the way to make it seem 
that unfortunately your own way of thinking is mm -hmm. not going to lead you to anything else than sadness and being by mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. Because the most we go, the most time we actually dedicate to this human being into actually trying to prove him wrong is one is, is going to make him think that he's right and you he have to prove exactly. you right. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't see it as a, as a, you know, the good old drunk uh, uncle. It's kind of like benign in a way. To me, what he's doing mm -hmm. is, is malice. It's mm -hmm. very, mm -hmm. it's right. very intentional. It's trying to erase us. Yes. Erase our community, don't say gay, controlling schools, controlling the, the fate of uh, um, transgender people mm -hmm. in our state. Mm -hmm. I mean, the malice of these guys is, is insane. I mean, it's just like if, if we don't raise our voice, even if he, I know he's wrong, we all know he's wrong. But if he if he doesn't get contempt from our side, mm -hmm. he's going to continue. And, and we're not going to let that happen. We I, I, I think it's really important to to educate how terrible this is. Um, and I'm actually gonna quote, um, you know, my very good friend and the executive director of SAVE, Todd Delmay, wrote a, um, a commentary for the Sun Sentinel about this lighting up the bridges because a lot of people can look at this and say, yeah. what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. um, the first big deal is that he's calling it Freedom Summer. Um, first of all, there's nothing free about controlling what local municipalities and cities can do Correct. to honor LGBTQ people. The second Correct. thing is, which is the most terrible part of it, is that terminology, Freedom Summer, was a campaign to register black voters in 1964. <clears throat> so he's taken a, f a, a terminology. Again, history is very important in context about how how much malice and how, again, he's very, he's, Trump is crazy. DeSantis is, is, is calculating, calculating, is very calculating. Although he, although it didn't work for this time around, maybe for his presidential mm -hmm. campaign, believe me, he's going to come back with a vengeance. Right. So, you know, I think we have to really make sure that our voters understand. And again, DeSantis is not on the ballot this year, mm -hmm. but people like DeSantis are on the ballot. And those type of measures about freedom, nothing is free about telling you who you can love, what, to how you can control your what body, lights. how what lights you can put up, what exactly. flags you can put up to celebrate. Correct. It is it's the it's the antithesis of what exactly. freedom is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Exactly. Whew, sorry. Okay, let me get back to the center here. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, let's clear up Florida and South Florida. Celebrate Pride with Trailblazer Awards and Mr. and Mrs. Stonewall. Oscar A. Nova, Mr. Stonewall 2024, and Stonewall Pride are gearing up to present the much-anticipated Trailblazer Awards ceremony. This event aims to honor prominent figures who have significantly contributed to the LGBTQ plus community. Among the esteemed recipients are Tiffany Ariagas, Misty Eyes, and Chris Caputo, recognized for their outstanding advocacy and activism. Scheduled for June 9th at the vibrant Hotspots magazine happening out art gallery, the ceremony promises an evening filled with inspiration and celebration. Attendees can expect riveting performances by former Stonewall court members, special guests, and enticing silent auction. In an exclusive twist, Hotspots happening out and Misty Eyes will host Mr. and Mrs. Stonewall on June 11th, starring none other than Oscar Anova and Rihanna Patron. This event marks a double celebration, commemorating the 10th anniversary of 2014 winners Grayson and Alexi and the 20th anniversary of Misty Eye's illustrious career. We are honored and very happy that Mr. Stonewall, Oscar A. Nova, is an anchor this evening on Queer News Tonight. So um, let's, uh, let's ask you some questions. And first of all, welcome to the table. I'm happy to, that you're here to share some information about this. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your reign as Mr. Stonewall. It's coming to an end. And how, how has your reign been and what has been the best of the highlights? Well, Jeff, it's been, it's been very much so a very, 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 very sweet, very inspirational uh, you know, way. It's been very much a feel of a lot of joy for one of those reasons, I'm here, feel mm -hmm. of joy, feel of people that are like willing and actually happy to be alive. And that's the most important part. But it's more so uh, bittersweet that it's coming out to the end. It's bittersweet coming to the end because I will wish that I would have more time to do more for my community. The community that it has actually evolved into a society. Mm -hmm. Because I don't believe that it's any more a community. We are a society. We are full of joy, love and a lot more to give to what it comes to sharing with everybody. 
Mm -hmm. And then the Trailblazer Award is actually only coming from the point, the standing point that I actually sit down in my living room with my ex-partner thinking about the fact of why we have to sit down and celebrate when they are gone. Mm -hmm. Why we don't take the opportunity to give them some gratitude and show them some humble actions while they're alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And actually... I, I don't find any, 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 any award ceremony, right? That it will actually give them that opportunity to call them after the fact, mm. to let them know that their legacy, their hard work, and their every single day, a passion, contribution to our society today is, is being paving the way for us to be able in the future to be free as we are right now, as what the Stonewall movement was. I have, a, I have a question that maybe some of our viewers, uh -huh. um, um, the, the pageant community, for mm -hmm. those who are not familiar, first of all, what brought you to the pageant community? And what would you say to somebody who says, you know, when, people, when the average viewer might hear the word pageant, they're thinking Miss America, or they're mm -hmm. thinking something right. that doesn't have a lot of meaning in today's culture. Right. What is the meaning of the pageant world in today's to, to our community? The pageant, the pageant, first, I'm going to explain for myself how I was related to this pageant thing. The pageant thing was actually in my DNA. Mm -hmm. Family members and people that I've been, when I was growing up, were very involved into the Miss Universe uh, 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 pageantry system. That has to actually um, become into my daily living, <laughs> my, my one-on-one, my, my, my appreciate, my appreciation for, my appreciation, I'm sorry to say, for beauty, not only for beauty, for intelligence, mm -hmm. my appreciation for actually using every platform that you have in the world as a king or as a, as a queen to instruct people that are behind you that probably they don't know or they don't have the opportunities or the tools that that person now called king or queen have in order for them to achieve their dreams or help others achieve their dreams by the rule, by the way of they are mm -hmm. or being a role model for them in the future. That's wonderful. So that's the reason why that applies to me now. Now, how can I use that as my, my, my fellow pageant competitors can use that? I don't know. That's a very particular and personal mm -hmm. decision that everybody mm -hmm. can make when they actually are being called so-and-so name. This is a title that I signed up in June the 6th of last year. And this is a title that I've been working since then. That was my job interview. That was the job interview that I went for, <laughs> but nobody has actually offered it to me. I want to look for it. Mm -hmm. So might as well, yes. I'm going to live up to the legacy that this actually means. It's more than a sash. It's yeah. more to be called a king. It's more than actually be the recognition. Oh, Mr. Stonewall arrived. Oh, Mr. Stonewall is here. It's not that. The thing that have drove me every single day to stand up and actually live after this legacy is the remembrance of the actions the people had 55 years ago that now allows me to walk into a bar and be happy and be proud and be able to call myself a gay man without restriction, without being held in myself so, so, so in the dark. Because I'm not, I'm not able to say that. And that was what they did back then. Yeah. And that's why I carry it with so much proud right. and so much joy. This is not just a bar title for me. No. This is my freedom. This is my legacy that I want to leave to the one that's coming behind me. Mm. That's wonderful. And yes. June 11th is the upcoming pageant where I guess you'll pass the sash. Um, tell I will us pass about that event <laughs> and what's and and uh, what's going to be happening and how can people come out to see it? Yeah, June the 11th is going to be the night that I will actually will never pass the sash. <laughs> <laughs> I will sure. never I'll pass have to rip because the crown off my head. Because rigged. I'm going to tell you this much: once you are Mr. Stonewall, you will forever be Mr. Stonewall. Oh, wow. Your commitment is not over at the day the 360. 66 day that it come after your commitment is done when you say it's done mm. and until i have life until god give me strength and health
I will be here claiming what a stone wall means and claiming what a stone wall is and claiming what a stone wall will become if we don't let it die, mm. if we don't let, if we don't bury it. Now, my commitment to this family, a Stonewall family, the Misty Eyes, has been actually mm -hmm. very eager, <laughs> fighting every single every single year from not funds for nothing, from her own packet. That is the reason why I say I want to be part of it. I want to be a Misty Eyes one in the future. Mm -hmm. And then it's not passing. It's actually it's going to be a night full of love, full of enjoyment. It's going to be a night full of surprises mm -hmm. but it's also want to be a bittersweet bitter bitter and bittersweet night that is gonna actually i will be able to crown my successor mm. my successor in the moment yes but never yeah. my successor <laughs> in my heart because yeah. that's gonna be a sister oh. it's uh, gonna be a brother and it's gonna be somebody yeah, that i will love to work <laughs> in the future to also not make them see how i see it but also to explore and have them go above and beyond to actually put the 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 desire mm -hmm. to work for the community in their own very own way. Mm. Well, it's very apparent from your passion why you yeah. hold that sash, yeah. and, right. and thank you for thank you. sharing that with such passion because mm -hmm. I think it's really important about the history. And yeah, uh, thank you I'm guys. Look forward to seeing everybody on June 11th. That's right. Is there is there a headpiece that matches the sash? It's 100 a headpiece. It's 100 percent a headpiece <laughs> that matches the sash, oh. and it's actually um, I have to highlight it was my first pageant. Wow. And it was a pageant that I won by only one point, but I still won the pageant. Have it to realize also, I have helped many others to achieve that same feeling and through all the 10 years of careers that I've been working in pageant three and in, in the LGBTQ plus community. And it's been a lovely, it's, it's been a lovely journey. And I, my journey is not over now. My, my journey just has begun. Well, keep True. sharing that voice with the community. Oh, 100 percent. I know you will. Um, best luck to the yes. upcoming <laughs> Mr. and Miss uh, Stonewall, Stonewall uh, this year. So Thank you, guys. Go Thank to the you. event. So next, we are proud of our special partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. Supporting that partnership, we are broadcasting from our permanent set here at Sunshine Cathedral at the Happening Out Television Studios. We broadcast Sunshine Cathedral Sunday International Service at 10.30 a.m. We finish tonight's queer news headlines with a segment we call LGBTQ Plus One Minute News. LGBTQ Plus One Minute News. Let's queer up the world view. Pride prevails. Over 150,000 defy ban to march in South Korea's 2024 parade. Despite being banned by authorities for the second consecutive year, more than 150,000 LGBTQ plus individuals and allies boldly marched in the Pride in South Korea 2024 parade. It took place in Seoul this week, marking the 25th anniversary of the country's Pride parade. While same-sex marriage has been legalized in more than 35 countries, South Korea still lags behind in granting such rights to its LGBTQ plus citizens. Hey, South Korea, 
get with the program or get left behind. Do you really want to be as hateful as North Korea? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nicely put. That's, that's a great this. question. Yeah. Yeah. I love this story. I think it's great to see 150,000 people come out for anything and especially yeah. for Pride. I only see, I love to see people coming together for one, under one for one cause, especially this one, be happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and you know, this tells you that not only being, uh, you know, because they're very uh, developed country okay. and economically very powerful, but still their, you know, their social uh, rights are lagging behind. It's mm -hmm. time to get on the schedule and follow Taiwan's uh, um, marching orders mm -hmm. here and get on with the agenda, so. 55 years of celebrating our LGBTQ plus history from the 1969 Stonewall riots to the 2024 Stonewall Parade. These are the stories of Stonewall Pride. Rainbow Capitalism helps make LGBTQ plus events like Stonewall Pride possible. Rainbow Capitalism, a phenomenon where businesses embrace and cater to the LGBTQ plus community has been on the rise, fostering greater social tolerance. Often the phrase can be perceived negatively on how a corporate entity supports the LGBTQ plus community. For 2024 Pride, it is clear that conservative pushback has affected corporate embracement this Pride Month. It's why we take time to tell the story of corporate partnerships. A prime example of this trend is the upcoming Wilton Manor's Stonewall Pride Festival and Parade, garnering significant support from organizations and businesses nationwide. Notable sponsors include Comcast, Amazon, Cleveland Clinic, JetBlue, American Express, Wharton Foundation, Absolute, Grinder, and more. These organizations have contributed to making this pride a reality. The costs associated with street closures, law enforcement and security, and the like are what make the fun celebration and signature events in our community a possibility during these contentious political times. Their backing underscores this event's significance and demonstrates a growing alignment between business capitalism and LGBTQ plus inclusion. Be sure to join more than 50,000 at the Pride Parade and Festival on June 15th and continue to follow the stories of Stonewall Pride. LGBTQ plus one minute news, let's queer up entertainment. Amazon cast Nicolas Galizzini as He-Man in Revive Masters of the Universe film. Nicolas Galizzini has been cast as He-Man in Amazon's live action Masters of the Universe film. Originally slated for Netflix, the project was revived by Amazon MGM Studios and Mattel. The film, following He-Man's arrival on Earth as a child, celebrates the character as both a powerful warrior and a gay icon. Masters of the Universe is scheduled to premiere on June 5th, 2026. This kid is becoming the it, it actor, the it star for the gay community, even though he's not gay, yeah. but he's nice to look at. So I'm no, very I'm good. I can. Huh? Yeah, yeah. For someone who claims to be uncomfortable with all the queer baiting in his career, Gallant seems, seems to be spending a lot of his professional life, well, queer baiting. <laughs> I'm just here for that He-Man thing. Yeah. yeah. I love that, <laughs> that, that haircut. Very, I hope they give that to him. It I'm does. I'm like queer baiting. What is a queer baiting? Well, it's, you know, just like, like yeah. he's, oh, like, like, he's, 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 oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Got got <laughs> but he's very, very handsome. Though, he right? is adorable. He is. I'll be definitely watching that show. <laughs> LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up gay culture. Idaho bar offering free beers to straight men throughout Pride Month. A bar called the Eagle, or the Bar in Eagle, Idaho, is offering free beer to straight men every Monday in June. The Old State Saloon announced Heterosexual Awareness Month, promotion coinciding with Pride Month. Known for conspiracy theory, trivia nights, and Christian singles mingle events, the bar claimed on Facebook that without heterosexual men, none of us would be here. Insert jokes here, of course. You know, first time I read this article when practicing, I'm like, wow, you know, Idaho has a, an eagle. And I'm like, they're giving away bears. I'm like, oh, wow. I got my guys. I'm like, no. You feel like a fish in the water, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's call it what it is. Idahomophobia. Uh -huh. Idahomophobia. Yes. <laughs> I mean, some people would say that beers to straight men is how it starts. <laughs> True. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very fun. No, no, no. Sexual I, Awareness Month, the initials are ham. I, so. <laughs> I can see that. Thank <laughs> you.
55 years of celebrating our LGBTQ plus history from the 1969 Stonewall riots to the 2024 Stonewall Parade. These are the stories of Stonewall Pride. Stonewall Pride Glow Night Parade wants you to light up June 15th. On Saturday, June 15th, the Wilton Manor Stonewall Pride Parade and Street Festival returns to Wilton Drive, South Florida's renowned gay mecca. This vibrant celebration commemorates the historic 1969 Stonewall riots, marking the inception of the LGBTQ plus human rights movement and its profound impact on our community. One of the highlights of this year's Pride Festival's festivities is the Glow Night Parade. For the first time ever, the parade is a cooler nighttime experience. As dust falls, the Stonewall Pride Parade transforms into a dazzling spectacle as pride floats, vehicles, and walking groups illuminate the night with a mesmerizing display of lights and colors. The Glow Night Parade promises to be an unforgettable experience, showcasing the spirit of pride and solidarity within the LGBTQ plus community. And illumination is not just from the parade participants. Organizers encourage the more than 50,000 participants to wear glow sticks, have rainbow flashlights, and stand out in your personal lights to celebrate LGBTQ plus. Don't miss out on this first of its kind parade for the LGBTQ plus South Florida community and continue to follow the beautiful stories of Stonewall Pride, exclusively from Queer News Tonight. That is today's news for the LGBTQ plus community and the world's first and only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show. If our community is important to you, share this news with your friends and family. Are you, like most of America, part of our very large television audience, watching this live LGBTQ plus news broadcast right now on Roku, Apple TV? Android TV, and Amazon Fire TV. Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ plus digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. If our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. This is the only place in the world that tells these type of LGBTQ plus stories in motion and sound. That is the passion of Hotspots Magazine, happening on television network and queer news tonight. I'm your anchor, Jeff Oliverio, and on behalf of these LGBTQ plus reporters, the anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Oscar A. Nova, Greg Shapiro, Dino Mosquera, and William Haas. Arr. We will see you daily at 8 p.m. And to our LGBTQ plus world, we wish you good night. Uh, happy Pride.